Mike Awesome uh, came up in, in, in some chat recently uh, that I was looking at somewhere and somebody was talking about um uh, this very thing you know they didn't mention realm but however they put it they were talking about a big guy you know what it was it was uh not moose i felt this way about moose <laughs> but they were but they were saying that there was a big guy that um uh oh man it was on the tip of my tongue impact? and now I, is it from impact maybe is it Madman Fulton? Because he does some no. crazy no, stuff. No, no, no. No, but it, the thing was, I don't know. Whatever it was, it could have been, you know, BS, but it just said, you know, what happened to so-and-so's. Oh, you know what? Someone was being asked an interview, I think, about what happened to so-and-so's career. And I don't even know if it's true or not. Oh, you know what it was? Matt Morgan. So oh. say, yeah. And, and I I don't know if it was Rip Rogers talking about him or what. So, you know, don't, don't take that. Uh, too seriously but someone was saying that he should have just stuck to big guy moves uh and he wants to show you you know that he can do a, a moonsault and, a, and, and, and a bunch of like high flying moves which uh you know nobody wants to see him do that was the context of what i was reading it reminded me of the conversation we had somebody's response was what about mike awesome he was a really um big guy and uh, he didn't wrestle like a big guy at all and I just wanted to comment on that. He definitely wrestled like a big guy. Oh, yeah. And that's that's what was so amazing because he would run, dive over the top rope and land like hitting a clothesline with somebody against the guardrail. Like, boom, that brutal footage of him and JT Smith where he folds him backwards over the guardrail. And what makes that so impressive is it definitely looks like a big guy doing that move, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like a killer whale coming out of the water and splash and just water going everywhere. That's that was Mike Austin's style. And he wasn't doing a bunch of backflips and landing on his feet and stuff like that. He wasn't taking clotheslines and wanting to do a, a flipping bump. So, you know, to that, I, I gotta say, it was amazing that he would do that move. Um, he didn't do very many flying moves, and that's what made him still look like a really big guy doing the moves. It looked, you know, uh, action-packed, violent, hurtful, damaging. And it was – I can't believe that somebody would say that he didn't wrestle like a he big guy. He was selective, I think. You know, like when he did pull that stuff out, it was like, hey, once in a while. And when he did it, it to your point, it's like, damn, it's like – it kind of fit in his realm in a lot of ways. He made it fit in his realm. It's, that. it's not like you give him a backdrop and he's like flipping and landing no. on his feet and jumping up and doing head scissors, you know? And uh, he, it was like, like you said, it was when he did it, it was like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, everybody was like, oh my God, why would he do that? He doesn't have to do that. He's so big. And, and so that that's a world of difference. Um, and, and it comes across that way to me even if not to that fan or if they just, you know, really um, didn't word it well. But uh, holy crap, uh, Mike was uh, uh, super big. And he would uh, – one thing that always impressed me was he would stand in a corner with his back to the turnbuckle and he'd pick the guy up uh, on his back, you know, maybe pick him up like um, – Electric chair? Yeah, Electric. whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then he would, he would walk up the – turnbuckle like step up on the second rope backwards behind him and the risk factor with that is like so high that you're going to slip or trip even without carrying a body on top of you so that's why i thought he was a great great representative of ecw heavyweight champion because he would take those chances just to really really annihilate his opponent and then go off the top and pick the guy up over his shoulders and bam, just bring him down and smash him. And it was definitely a big guy move. It was like high risk where he didn't need to do that, but he was extreme. So he was, he was there to entertain the, uh, the awesome fans. And he, I mean, he fit the bill brother. It was like, I remember just, you know, growing up and watching ECW and his, not only his matches with Masato, or, uh, Masato Tanaka, right. Um, but he had, um, like no like his presence as a champion was good like it yeah. and like it was a good contrast to you because you yeah. were the tv champ at the time and like 
yeah. what you were saying in, in one of our earlier episodes, you were hoping that you guys would kind of collide at some point, you know? Yeah, after we both, I wanted us to both be like separate pedestals that, that kept uh, pushing the company up and building the company up so that when we finally got there, all eyes would be on us. ECW would be at its uh, biggest growth, which it always was, you know, um, it was scaling up and up. Uh, but I wanted to, uh, no big hurry, wait till the moment was really organic and then clash and have those two styles come together, uh, uh, title versus title. That was my hopes. That would have been big money, big money for sure. 